Hello, 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 Loki here once again. This time I'm running a player tutorial on Roll20. As you can see, this left bar is a lot smaller than my GM tutorial, which if you haven't seen, I suggest you go watch it before this one, as it explains the basics of how this whole system works for Roll20. It is a free, Roll20 is a free site. Just straight up online, type in Roll20 and it pops up. It's real easy, it's free. You do have to have a membership though. And this is how you can perform as a player. As you can see, I can't see anyone's health bar or interact with anyone but myself because this is the only one as a player I am in control of. I can use my standard pointers that were explained in the last tutorial, use the drawing I explained, zoom in and out, and this is your distance finder. This goes on the map to show you the exact distance between your square and any other square. As you can see, these are all 30 feet because we're playing 5th edition, where diagonals count as one point. If this was Pathfinder, going like this would make it start going up, because in Pathfinder it doesn't count as one, but that's something with the games. It goes off the specific map settings, which will be covered in the map and token tutorial, which will also be the final tutorial of this series. Anyone can see these arrows you draw. Anyone. So there's no point hiding them because they're even on top of the fog of war. It's kind of impressive that way. As a player, you can change the color that represents you. Anything you draw and your arrow will become this color. Also, if you know the codes for colors, you can put in custom codes. Or just click that. Make it transparent. No one sees anything. Ha <laughs> ha! I go with red as a standard, though. And yeah, you can also use this, which is a dice roller. It automatically puts in the code for any rolls you like and shows the last rolls you have done. Optional additional settings, exploding dice, separate dice, compounded exploding, such as Shadowrun. What number you're looking for, whether it's greater or lesser than any specific number. All that, and it tells you how many successes. So say, I want to roll three d20s, and I only want things less than... I only want dice less than 10. So I say roll. It rolls three dice and it tells you how many were less than 10. I want it greater than 10. Switch that over. Roll again. Hey, sweet. Two successes each time. And yeah, any player can do this with any dice. You just click the dice and it automatically rolls it or you specify it into the whole system we have going here. <laughs> now, as a player, you can still remove your chat box as so, but your handouts only show things assigned for you to see, such as my own character. With my background and my portrait, a basic character sheet, which I use a third party so I never fill this out, but your player can change these characters, such as typing in half-elf. That is now my assigned race. And if I want to do anything with these, I can fill out the stats and basically make macros to draw from these stats. Like click on, I don't know, death saving throw. Whatever's assigned will be saved and have a special cool box. Problem is this system can be a bit glitchy so I don't normally use it myself. Hey, I got a nat 20 dicing with death. Yay! <laughs> You can also do your jukebox just to see what the GM has playing. You can't control anything or put any songs on because you're just a normal player. You can still show and hide the decks that are assigned to the game, but GM has control over all that. And this page is the exact same as when I was GM. Except for since I'm a player who's also GM permission, I can leave and rejoin as a GM. Now for the rest of this, what I'm mostly going to cover is the differences between playing as a player and playing as a GM. Like, I cannot switch layers, I cannot right-click anything to bring up that menu from before, and all I can do is with my token is mess with the bar's aura and name. I can't even change permissions at all. I cannot resize, and players and GM can both pull up these, which are just different symbols that pop up in the top right to show different status effects. They can mean whatever you want them to mean. 
they're just to remind you of differences. So let's zoom out a bit. And what's this? I made this. You can type it in, type in stuff, make boxes, put them on the environment, whatever you like. The text will always start off as black, like hi. I typed in hi, press enter, and it starts a new line, and it opens up like that. You click off it, and it saves it. You can also change the color before typing. But say I change to yellow, ooh, not yellow, ew. I change to blue. I can't select this and make it blue now. It's set unless I go around it like that. Then I can change the color. It's its whole thing. You can't delete these except for with the delete key. Now for your basic commands, they pop up every time you start. You have the roll command, which can be done with slash roll, 1d20 or 1d6 or whatever you like. And it, roll 3d, what? Roll 1d20. Ah, I see. I wasn't looking at the right spot. And it rolls you 1d20. As you saw, I can use the R as a shortcut for roll. It's pretty cool just to make shortcuts. And you can also change your rolls by, say, 1d20 plus 5 because I have a 5 modifier. And it shows you the whole process. You have the roll the dice command. You put number of dice, D, number of sides, so like 1d20, plus any modifiers or minus any modifiers. It does, you don't have to go 1d20 plus negative 1. You can just put 1d20 minus 1. It's simple. If you want to have a secret roll, only you and the GM can see, you just type in GM roll, which GMR I don't think works. Say 1d20 again. 1d... 4d20. Let's go with that. 4d20. You roll 4d20 for the GM and only you and him can see this. None of the other players would be able to. You have the GR, which works because it can't be GMR. It has to be GR, just like the R from roll. You can also whisper to any player or the GM just by typing in W and start with their name. So let's say like Burner, my friend here, or I have a guy here who goes by Alcane. You just type in any letter and if it's in their name, they'll pop up in the list. You press enter, it fills it out. And you can type whatever message you want afterwards. Or you can just go wisp, whoa, what the, weird. Or you could just go whisper GM. And whoever has GM permission will see it. GM, hi. Type enter, and bam. You and the GM can see hi. No one else can. It's simple. Yay! And as a player, you just do what you're told. You cannot change maps. You manipulate your stuff as best you're able while still following the rules. And that's basically how being a player works in this game. There's not much more to it. One thing you should always talk about your group with is whether or not you're going to do video and voice in-game or in Skype, because this system can sometimes glitch out, but sometimes people don't have the same media you do. So that's always something to consider. Alphabetically sort token actions, yeah, whatever, that works. And here's my macro bar. I still have that as a player. It just automatically pulls up any macros I have set under that name. The way to take a, up a macro not in that bar, you put in hashtag, and it gives you a list of every macro in your list. Of course, if you want to be more specific, like say I'm trying to pull up a fire attack, I type in S and my firebolt pops up, because I named that macro firebolt. And it just pulls on the macro, bam. And this has been your basic player tutorial, it's very simple. If you need anything else, there's the help menu, but I wouldn't suggest using it too often because it can be a bit glitchy. And yeah, we can't see the borderlines because of the fog of war. This is how you be a player. You play the game, use the macros that it lists whenever you join the game, and just have fun with it. Get a group together, have some fun, and enjoy yourself. This has been a video by Loki, your basic player tutorial. Goodbye, and I will see you in the map tutorial. Bye.